you, Bill. And good morning, good morning, and welcome to Uni of Orange County. We're so glad that you've chosen to join us this morning, or any time that you're watching us. We're glad that you're here. And we always like to begin with our vision and our mission statement. Our vision statement is centered in divine love. We joyfully co-create a world that works for all. And our mission is to awaken, inspire, and transform lives. And I always like to thank those people who are making our service possible. We have Bill on piano, and Tom is on sound, and Waverly is streaming, and John is on camera, and Christopher is our prior prayer platform person. Well, I'll say that quickly three times, prayer platform person. Um, so we're glad that you're all here. And we have several activities going on. We have our class on Wednesday night based on the book Living Originally by Robert Brummett. We also have our spiritual discussion group on the first and third Sunday after church at 11 o'clock. And then our gratitude circle is meeting today after church at 11 o'clock. And they're going to be discussing the question, What's a difficult lesson in life you're grateful you had the opportunity to learn? So that's all on Zoom. It's the same Zoom number, 818-8859-3747. And so whatever you decide to join us, whatever activity, we hope that you do. And now I'm going to turn it over to Christopher for our daily word and meditation. Today's reading from the uh, Daily Word, and the topic is now, N-O-W, now. Sunday, January 31st, I find my power in this very moment. There is power in this very moment. Yesterday has passed, and tomorrow is not yet here. There is only this moment, ripe with promise and potential, ready for me to live into it fully. Through my many divine gifts, everything I need to get started is within me. I need not wait for the perfect moment to arrive because there is no time more perfect than now and no place more perfect than here. Procrastination has no place in my life. I fritter away my energy when I find reasons not to get started, losing my zeal and focus and inviting frustration into my life. Today I claim the power of the present and say this is the day I begin. Now is the time to begin to serve, to create, to forgive, and to love. And from the second book of Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 2, see, now is the acceptable time, see, now is the day of salvation. So please get comfortable. We're going to meditate for the next five minutes. Find a spot that you can sit in and be very comfortable without having to move a muscle for the next five minutes. Please take three deep breaths. And close your eyes. When you inhale, think of the numbers one, two. And when you exhale, think of the numbers three, four. And do that a few times on your own, inhaling one, two, and exhaling three, four. Thank you. 
Now inhale the word peace and exhale the words be still. Inhaling peace and exhaling be still. And do that on your own a few more times. Inhaling peace and exhaling be still. If your mind begins to wander, just bring it back to peace, be still. Thank you, Bill. That was beautiful. Well, welcome. Uh, we are going to continue kind of discussing this book, The Quest. Last week, we talked about the nature of God, and we talked about the fact that God was omnipresence, God was omnipotence, God was omniscience, meaning God was presence, God was power, God was wisdom, and these are the aspects of God. So what are we? What are we human beings? You know, if someone says to you, um, who are you? You usually answer with questions like, oh, I'm a minister, I'm a teacher, I'm a parent, I'm a 
pianist, I'm, you know, retired, I'm a grandparent. We tend to think of ourselves not on what we are, but on who we are in the world. We describe ourselves based on our job or our role in life. But the fact of the matter is that we are much more than that role that we play in life. Because if God is omnipresence, and God is omniscience, and God is omnipotence, that means that God is within us. So we are not just human beings, we are also spiritual. In fact, we are spiritual, and we have our spirit, the soul, and the body part of us. So there's these two differences. So when we answer the question who we are, it's very different than if we get asked the question what we are. So it is not who I am, but it is what I am. So we have this part of us that is spirit, but we also have this part of us that is human. And Emily Cady, in her book, Lessons in Truth, talks about the difference between individuality and personality. So the individuality is that part of us that is God, that part of us that is connected to spirit. It is something that we are just born to by the very nature of our being, by the very nature of God. Our personality is that part of us that we come into the world with, our little quirks, our little habits. It often is reflected by how we are brought up. But a lot of it is just kind of innate in us. So I had, these, uh, I had these two cats, Logan and Dakota. And I got them when they were kittens. My friend actually had found the mother cat pregnant in the trash can behind her apartment building and brought the mother cat into her apartment and helped birth these kittens. And I took Logan and Dakota because they were inseparable. I got them, they were like six weeks old. These cats were always together. They were born of the same mother. They were raised in the same home. They got exact same treatment. They were completely inseparable. However, they had two totally different personalities. They were nothing alike personality-wise. Dakota was like this man about town. He was always getting out. He was always roaming. He was kind of like, you know, a real male cat. And Logan was very, like, prim and proper. And she would wait when Dakota would go out and wander around, wait for him to come home. And I would look at these two cats, and I would think, that is what happens with us human beings. Very often, we can come from the same family, we can be raised in the same house, and yet we're different for our siblings. Why? Because we come into this earth with certain characteristics that may be a little different than something else. So there's three aspects of us. So first we have spirit. And like I said, that's that part of us that is God. That is that part of us that is better, bigger than our human nature. And how we connect with that part of us is through going within. There's no way to connect with that part of us other than going within. Sometimes we get a glimpse of this spirit when we look out and see the wonders of the world and we feel something and it overpowers us and it brings, can bring tears to our eyes. It can bring joy to our heart. That is when we are connecting with it. It is like we are the wave in the ocean. Now, the wave is the same as the ocean. It has the same molecular as the ocean, but it, yet it is not the ocean. The ocean has much more power, but everything that is the ocean is also in the wave, and that is God and us. Everything that is in God is in us. Does that mean that we are God? No but it means that we are part of God and God is part of us. And that is our spirit. And that is something that never changes. That is something that is always constant, although our connection to that changes. Sometimes when we feel closer to God, we feel more of that spiritual nature of ourselves. And sometimes when we feel apart from God, we forget that we are part of God. So we have this spiritual part. And then we have our soul. And the soul is like the emotional, mental aspect of our being. And um, 
the soul comes into this earth, and I think we come in with certain things we're already in us. So of all people, you know, the Disney Studios decided to make a movie called Soul. And it is the cutest cartoon. It is, you have to watch it. it. Right now, you can only see it streamed on the Disney Channel. It's worth getting the Disney Channel just to see this movie. And so the movie is about a man by the name of Joe who loves music. Music is his life. And um, he's been teaching music, and he hasn't had much success as a musician. And he finally gets this audition, and he gets invited to play with this band, this jazz band. He's a jazz pianist, and he's so excited. And he leaves the audition, and he's finally getting to do his dream. And he's so busy talking on the phone about how he finally got his dream. And he misses, has all these near misses. And finally, he just steps into a manhole. And he finds that he has, part of him, has died. And so we see Joe in this scene having just dropped into the manhole well, and being oh transported. Help! I'm not dying! Holy! Oh, my goodness! Mm, this weird. The council. There's a soul missing. Is this heaven? No. Is it H E double hockey sticks? Hell, hell, hell. Quiet coyotes. <laughs> no, it's the great before. This is where new souls get their personalities, quirks, and interests before they go to Earth. Here we are. Don't worry, you can't crush a soul here. That's what life on Earth is for. So Joe goes to the great before, not the great beyond. He escapes the great, and he meets the little soul, number 22. And 22 is the soul who doesn't want to go to Earth because she feels, he feels, whatever, that Earth is just terrible, and why would you want to go to Earth, and it's a terrible place, like it's, it says in the movie, you know, believes that Earth is what crushes the soul. And so Earth, but by accident, they wind up going to Earth, but Joe winds up in the body of a cat, and Soul winds up in the body of Joe. And it's so interesting to see this. You see, our soul is based on many things. Um, we may be born into the world with certain characteristics, but very often our soul changes by the life that we are born into. When you think about the soul, because it's the mind, it's the emotion and the mind, the soul is where we can truly change our life. You know, that we can't change our spirit. Because the spirit is that divine within us. And we know that the divine is unchanging. Because the divine is the divine. In fact, this, and we have that divine within us. In fact, there's a story, it's an ancient story about the gods. Man that was originally had the same divinity as the gods. But we misused it. So the gods decide that they are going to hide our divinity. So they talk about where they're going to hide this divinity, and they say, well, let's hide it on the top, of the tallest mountain. And they go, no, that won't work, because man eventually will go to that tallest mountain. And they say, well, let's hide it in the deepest sea. And they think about that. They go, you know, man will eventually go to the deepest sea. And so they're trying to figure out where to hide it. And they finally realize the one place that man will not go to and so they hide man's divinity within themselves, within man itself. Because think about it, we love to explore, but it's very hard for us to go deep within. So when we go deep within, that is the spirit. The soul is different. So the soul is like that part of us that is a combination of a little bit of our individuality mixed with the personality. It has that little bit of God, but it also has all that human stuff. And it's not the body, because the soul without the body can't taste or smell or anything. And there's a scene in the soul, which we're going to see now, 
where Joe is just beginning to understand that this soul of his is not his body. Hey, look, I already know everything about Earth, and I don't want anything to do with it. You're missing out on the joys of life, like uh, pizza. I can't smell. We can't, we can't taste either? All that stuff is in your body. No smell, no taste. Or touch. See? OK, I get it. So the soul is this part of us. It is not our body. And the soul is that part of us where we get to do the work, where we get to make the changes in our life, our emotional and mental changes. If you're not happy in your life, if things aren't going the way you want, then the soul is that place where we get to change. The soul is that place where we get to question what we're doing, what we want to do, where we want to go. Um, in the movie, you know, Joe has always believed that music was his purpose, that music was everything. But he learns an important lesson because we tend to think that we are that thing, our purpose. In fact, in the movie, it talks about the fact that the souls don't go to the great before to get our purpose. Our purpose is to be us. Our purpose is to be the expression of God here on earth. The purpose is to be God's hands, God's feet, God's eyes, God's voice. That is our purpose. What we do in life is not as important as how we are in life. So if you think you know your purpose or you don't know your purpose as far as what it is you're supposed to do, it doesn't matter. The question is, how are you on this earth? And if it isn't the way you want to be, then you need to change that. You need to change the conditions of your being. And that is done in the soul. You know, there's that expression, soul searching. You know, someone says we need to do soul searching. And what that is, is finding that true purpose, try finding within us what it is that we are supposed to be in this earth, on this earth, in these bodies, which brings us to the third aspect of us, the bodies. So the bodies are our vehicles. They are our five senses. They allow us to experience pizza. They allow us to experience, you know, the breeze on our faces. They allow us to experience pain. They allow us to experience certain pleasures. The body is the vehicle that the soul and the spirit is housed in. So if spirit, God, and soul, our soul, is housed in this body, I want to ask you the question, why do we miss use our bodies so much. Think about it. Our bodies are truly the temple that God resides within us. And yet we treat these bodies so poorly, we wouldn't go into a temple where we believe that God is and treat it that way. We wouldn't trash it and just throw garbage all over the place and not care about it. And yet we often do that with our bodies. We don't think of our bodies as part of the whole package of who and what we are. And it is time for us to maybe ask ourselves this question. God created these bodies to be a vehicle for it in this world. And in these bodies, he put this soul, which is us and how we are in the world. So isn't it important that we treat our bodies the same way we would treat the God within us and our soul? Shouldn't we take care of it? Shouldn't we love it and nurture it and respect it? Shouldn't we ask ourselves when we do certain things, is this really taking care of this temple that we've been given? You see, when we realize that we are spirit, soul, and body, we really can't totally separate them. So they all have to work together to make us whole, to make us what we are. Because what we are in this world is really important. It is what we are in this world that people will remember 
long after we're gone. When we leave these bodies and we leave this earth, people are not going to talk about what we did for a living or you know this, that, or the other. They're going to talk about what we were as a person. Were we kind? Were we loving? Did we care for others? Did we respect others? Did we treat others the way we wanted to be treated? Were we truly God manifested in this physical form in this world? These are the important questions that we have to ask while we're alive because these are the questions that get asked after we're no longer here. So the next time you think about who you are, change it and ask yourself the question, what am I? And am I what I want to be? Or do I need to look deep within and make the changes that will change me from the who to the what so that I love the what that I am in this world? So I invite you to close your eyes for a moment. And you know, I read somewhere that a good exercise is to imagine that it is time when we have left this body. What is it that we would want someone to say in our eulogy? What words would we want someone to use to describe us? What part of us do we want to leave in the minds and hearts of those we leave behind? If those words and those description is not what we want to be remembered for, then we need to ask ourselves the question, how can I change what I am so that what I am truly reflects what I believe God wants for me? Take that question into meditation sometime and write down what comes up. And then ask yourself, what do I have to do to make that true for me right now in this lifetime? This total part of me, spirit, soul, and body. So that I truly become and I truly am the what that God intended for me. And so it is. Amen.
Thank you, Bill. That is wonderful. So here at Unity, we have five basic principles that we believe. And the first one is that God is all good and active in everything, everywhere. That means that, number two, that I'm naturally good because God's divinity is in me and in everyone. And that means everyone. And three, that I create my experiences by what I choose to think and what I feel and believe. And just quickly, if we look at this, number one, that God is. Number two, we are spirit. We are part of God. Three, we create our experiences by what we choose to think, feel, and believe. That is our soul working in our life. And then through affirmative prayer and meditation, I connect with God and bring out the good in my life. And then I do and give my best by living the truth I know, I make a difference. And that living the truth that we know and making a difference is also part of the body. So the body, soul, and spirit is all involved in these five principles. And so remember that, you know, they're just not some things, but they are what unity truly believes. And so one way that we do and live our best is through giving. You know, the law of giving and receiving. This We live in a universe where things are constantly moving. And everything is energy, which means that money is energy. The money that we have is energy. And in order for energy to truly flow in our lives, we have to keep it moving. And so when we give... What we are doing is we are increasing that energy in our life. So the more that we give, the more that we receive. And it's not just money. It's our time. It's our talents. When we give of ourselves, we get more. Have you ever noticed that the people that have a lot to do seem to have time to do a lot? Whereas the people who don't have a lot to do don't seem to have any time to do a lot? That's because... We are all energy. So we are grateful for all the gifts that you give us because we know that in return, you will receive gifts. And we are grateful for all you, for tuning in to the YouTube channel, you know, for letting and sharing that YouTube channel with other people, for liking it, for subscribing to it. All of that is giving. And that's what we want to do. We want to give because we can't outgive God. So the more we give in any way, the more that we receive. So any way that you can give, we appreciate it. And if you're getting ready to give your gifts, your monetary gifts, you can do it by texting 77977, or you can go on our webpage under Donate and give it there. You can write a check and mail it. You can give through our app. So if you're getting ready to do that giving right now, I invite you to take a moment and bless what you are about to give. As we say our blessing prayer, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give, all that I have, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. And so another way you can give is by tuning in next week. You know, joining us every Sunday. You can join us live or you can view us afterward. But we hope that you come back next week and we love to see you. And while you're, if you're um, live streaming, I didn't know if you were this, you can make comments. So um, we have a lot of people that like to comment about it. So it makes it feel more like a community. So there's a lot of ways that we can give of ourselves and we welcome all of it. And so... We now close with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. So be safe, be blessed, and thank you for being here. And see you next week. Have a great week. Thank you.